Well, welcome everyone. We're delighted to see ch such a, a marvelous turnout for this, this cool folklore lunch. My name is Andy Palmer. I'm the interim director of the Cool Folklore Center. And I wanted to begin today by acknowledging that we're meeting on Cree and Blackfoot territory in a place known in English as Beaver Hills House, but as is said in the language of the area by the Cree people, a Miskwis cheese wasaki Khan. And this particular place is closest to the territory retained by um, Chief Papasteo, uh, Papaste Chase representative at the signing of Treaty 6. And we're meeting here within a few feet of the hunting grounds, trails, and bury, burying, burying areas of Nakota Sioux, Cree, Iroquois Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, and we are on land that is solemnized in the Treaty uh, Treaty 6. Uh, we acknowledge both the signatories and the non-signatories to Treaty 6. We acknowledge the descendants of Treaty 6 who live in this area, including in Amiskwis Cheese, Wasahi Khan, at, at uh, Samson, Ermanskin, Montana, Louis Bull, Alexander, Enoch, Paul, Alexis, the former Papas Chase and Michelle Reserves, and the settlements spread out around Musquachis, Lac Saint Anne, and Saint Albert. Saint Albert. We're very grateful to be able to speak on the land today and to add to um, the history of this place with an acknowledgement of Ukrainians and now Ukrainian Canadians have come to this area and also cherish this land and all of us other settlers who are now in this place. Uh, the Cool Folklore Center uh, has a longer name and today we haven't put up our, our banner. Normally we have these presentations in our very small Cool Folklore Center uh, in Convocation Hall and Old Arts. Uh, but we're, we're delighted to see so many of you here today, and we know that it's because of the interest in um, Taras Shevchenko, um, the great poet, painter, and ethnographer. Um, Shevchenko, as most people here will know, was born 209 years ago yesterday, and died on this day, March 10th, 1861, in St. Petersburg. Uh, he is. He was. He was taken um, back with uh, by by uh, by the kindness of his friends from St. Petersburg to his home territory, and is now buried on Monk's Hill, now called Taras Hill, on the Dnipro River, in Kaniv. Um, there's great support here in this room today for the multimedia exhibition that's been put together um, by two of our uh, curators and longtime uh, cool, cool supporters. Um, we have today uh, 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 Larissa Samvalia Cheladin, who is the Cool Chair of Ethnography, and also Dr. Larissa, as of just a few weeks ago. And we're just delighted to have her as a curator here. Um, she, is, she is going to be saying a few words about the exhibit before we introduce her co-curator, um, who you might have noticed here in the front row, um, Dmitro Yes. Penko, and we are so delighted to have him uh, and Larissa working on this together. Um, because I'll talk about Mitro in a minute, I'd like to sing the praises of Larissa, if I may, for just a moment. Um, Larissa has been a part of the center uh, for many years now in so many capacities. She was a community liaison for many years for, for the center, and in that, she worked on so many projects that are dear to Ukrainian and Ukrainian Canadian hearts, and indeed the rest of us. She's an internationally renowned artist whose work hangs in Buckingham Palace, Canadian embassies around the world. Um, but she's not just a painter. She's also someone who's done some marvelous projection work in multimedia, uh, including for some of the leading Ukrainian dance companies in Canada. So she brings that expertise to this project 
one of her many, many curatorial projects um, throughout a very long career. And she's also, by the way, a new grandmother. Um, so congratulations to you, Larissa. And so here, just to say a few words, thank you so much, um, is Larissa to speak about the exhibit. Thanks, Andy, and thanks, everyone, for showing up today. Um, it was a pleasure to uh, work with Mitra on this exhibit. It's actually been a long time in the making. Uh, the uh, first seed of it, um, I think Mitra put together over a year ago. We were actually, uh, he was actually hoping to create some kind of exhibit. Um, um, but with all the, the the invasion of Ukraine and everything else that's happened, it actually gave it like the silver lining as we had time to work on it and put it together. Uh, the idea of making it multimedia was something new for the center in that you do have to invest in some equipment, the screens, but it allowed us to, to present a lot more information. Someone like Taras Shevchenko has had a long history and, and inspired so many people and has had so much work that each of the um, screens present him and how he, his work right from who, who was um, Mr. Shevchenko, Pan Shevchenko, all the way through to how he has inspired the memes that we see on social media today. So I just actually want to congratulate Mitra for putting all the material together. It was uh, an easy exhibit to work on and I'm going to turn it back over to Andy so she can explain and introduce our actually main curator. <laughs> so there's a lot that can be said about Dmitro Yosipenko. First of all, you should know that he has degrees in philology at the MA and BA level from Shevchenko National University in Kiev. Um, he was also a research fellow for many years at the Tarashchenko Institute of Literature and the National Museum of Sciences in Ukraine. Um, and uh, he, he kept that position until he came to us to begin uh, being a PhD student uh, to study with Dr. Pogostyan in 2021. So, Mitro is uh, a PhD student, but with a long and, and, and storied career. Um, in his work as an archivist and as, as a, a speaker of many languages, um, he has put together a number of exhibits. Uh, he has worked on five different book projects. He's collaborated with authors uh, in Australia, in Canada, in Ukraine, in Poland, and has really developed quite a distinguished career. I'm very grateful to, to the parts of Mitro's expertise that don't necessarily show up as slides uh, move quickly by you. One of the most special parts of the work that he has been doing has been maintaining relationships with artists in Ukraine, all of whom freely and generously gave their work to be shown in this exhibition. Um, and uh, we're very grateful to all of those artists for their participation. Every one of them agreed. I was looking for contracts that needed to be signed for exhibitions, everything on handshakes, goodwill, and love. And that is exactly what we have for our dear PhD student, who today will be presenting on Dume Moi, My Thoughts, Taras Shevchenko's story of empathy and resistance amid the ongoing war in Ukraine. Please join me in welcoming uh, Dmitro Yesipenko. Thank you for this general introduction. I hope you can see me. You can see me. You can hear me well. And uh, you know, it's little wonder that because I worked uh, at Taras Shevchenko Institute of Literature and I work in Shevchenko Studies Department. So it's not coincidence that today I'm presenting this Shevchenko exhibition. It's a bit honor. It's a big honor for me. Thank you all for coming. Uh, Co-curators of this exhibition, Larissa Cimbaluk-Chiladin, Dr. Larissa Cimbaluk-Chiladin, and me, we have 
interesting and tricky task because we needed to adapt this exhibition to the needs, to the interests of people who know almost nothing about Shevchenko and for people who know a lot about Shevchenko. So Shevchenko uh, is kind of embodiment of all Ukrainian, of Ukrainians. We wrote this in announcement and this is very true. Yes, he was a brilliant writer, he was a genius poet, but he was also one of the first Ukrainian historians and visionaries. During his lifetime, in his work primarily in poetry, Shevchenko created a viable myth, the idea of glorious past of Ukraine uh, that was used, uh, that guided generations of people after him uh, in Ukrainian national and state building and development. Maybe you know the famous monograph on Shevchenko. The title is The Poet as Mismaker. This is a famous monograph by Harvard professor Grigory George Grabovich. And in this meaning, Mismaker is not a fantasist, but creator of key senses, visioner, and cultural trigger. Shevchenko indeed became not only writer, the author of several poetry collections, not only great artist, very talented uh, painter, not only political exile and unique personality. So this is not exhibition about one person. This is kind of exhibition about one nation. This is a story about Ukrainians during the last 200 years, because not a single important event in the history of Ukraine, in the life of Ukrainian communities worldwide, happened without mentions of Shevchenko's name, without visual images, without his text, without his symbolic messages. And especially now, after the full-scale invasion, Russian invasion on February 24th, 2022, the name of Shevchenko constantly appears in the news from Ukraine. While visiting that very powerful and emotionally difficult moving exhibition and issued diplomas, on the other side of this hall, we can notice that among the graduates, among these heroes of this exhibition, Ukrainian students who were killed by Russia, there are graduates of Shevchenko University. And Shevchenko University is the largest university of our country, of Ukraine. In the news about shelling of the civilian infrastructure in the center of Kyiv in October 2022, we see an image of huge shell-created crater near the playground in Shevchenko part. Shevchenko Park, which is next to the university named after Shevchenko. Uh, on one of the screens, on the fourth one, to be precise, we can see the damaged booth of Shevchenko on the central square of Borodyanka. And I'll uh, tell a little bit more how Ukrainian artists depicted this event, how they reimagined this image of, uh, of Shevchenko's booth ruined by Russian shelling. After the start of the Russian-Ukrainian uh, Russian war in 2014, it happened quite a few years ago already, unfortunately. Uh, so since then, we have mass reprints of Shevchenko's most famous collection, Kobzar, but as Frontovy Kobzar, Frontline Kobzar, for Ukrainian soldiers, of course. And examples of such omnipresence of Shevchenko in the cultural, in historical and political space can go on and on. Huge number of examples on this. Uh, initially, the idea of the Shevchenko exhibition as a small student project appeared about a year and a half ago, in the fall of 2021. At first, it was supposed to be a small demonstration of publications from uh, our library, from the library of Bogdan Medvitsky Ukrainian Folklore Archives, and the then archivist of the censure, uh, Marina Chernyavska, who is here with now. Thank you, Marina. Uh, Marina helped a lot with finding relevant literature and posters at that time. But, on February 24th, everything changed. It goes without saying that in the first months it was even impossible even to think about like continuing of the project, about implementing of this idea. There were a lot more urgent things to do for all of us, I believe. And, and later it became obvious that the previous idea became actually irrelevant. It's impossible not to talk about the most obvious and the most important about the war. Or, it's possible to, to speak about the place of Shevchenko, his image and works uh, that they received in the circumstances of Ukrainian resistance to Russian full-scale aggression, to occupation, to genocidal policy of Russia. So in the autumn of uh, 2022, later, after the first idea, I approached Dr. Larissa tsimbaluk Chiladin with uh, the idea of different multi-topical exhibition, and the idea found her urgent support. Thank you. 
Actually, Dr. Tsimbaluk Chilanin proposed the title, the name for this exhibition, Moje Dumy, My Thoughts, and this was a perfect match. Why? Shevchenko wrote the po this poem, Dumy Moi, in 1840 during his stay in St. Petersburg. The text reflected poet's longing for his native land, his thoughts about Ukraine, about glorious past of Ukraine, and his concerns about Ukraine's present. Dumy Moi has become especially popular in diaspora communities. The words of Dumy Moi, Moji Dumy, resonate at almost every Shevchenko concert, and they will probably resonate at the Shevchenko concert in Edmonton this Sunday. The song reveals a connection of performers with the land of the ancestors and expresses concern about Ukraine's fate. Being physically far from Ukraine, or perhaps even never having been to the country, members of Ukrainian communities here in Edmonton and everywhere worldwide pay tribute to the memory of their parents, grandfathers, great-grandfathers. On the other hand, today millions of Ukrainians in Ukraine, especially young Ukrainians, they think they listen and they reflect on Shevchenko's words in a modern interpretation with a new melody. On the first screen, we have this example of the song Dumy by contemporary Ukrainian artists Artem Pivovarov and Darofeyeva. The fact that Shevchenko's words resonate in millions of hearts is evidenced by the video from the concerts in bomb shelters, by the popularity of this song uh, on YouTube and comments under the clip. Over 31 million views, which is impressive number for Ukrainian content, content on YouTube. Thousands of people at concerts and thousands of comments. And in these comments we can read how Dumimoy, my thoughts, resonate with people who have left the cities, the homes, but whose thoughts are in Ukraine and with Ukraine. And I would like to briefly explain the structure of the exhibition, what actually you can see on these four screens. The first one titled, Who was Mr. Shevchenko? It tells about the significance of Shevchenko's deeds and writings in the context of his time. It also demonstrates his brilliant pa uh, paintings because Shevchenko was a professional artist. So it's easy to make presentation about Shevchenko. You can always use his beautiful paintings. The only uh, issue is to pick only a few of them because many, so many of them are really meaningful and beautiful. The main message for me was to reveal Shevchenko's personality as the one who, despite very difficult personal circumstances, personal trials, consistently demonstrate a sense of compassion for, for the misfortune of others. And it's interesting how this quality of his character was depicted by contemporary Ukrainian artists. So the first screen explains the key moments of Shevchenko's biography and the meaning of his poetry. Uh, and why actually this exhibition have this title Dumy Moi and what's the, Im the meaning of this title for Shevchenko, for his contemporaries, as well as for us, as well as for witnesses and victims of the war in Ukraine. The second screen, this one, traces the theme of Shevchenko and the Ukrainian diaspora. It highlights the poet's role in Ukrainian communities in different countries, first and foremost here in Canada, uh, most of the presented picturesque and indeed unique materials are carefully stored in Bogdan Medvitsky Ukrainian Folklore Archives, which is at the Kyiv Folklore Center here at the University of Alberta. The admiration or even cult of Shevchenko outside of Ukraine is no less or sometimes even more tangible, more visible than within Ukraine. Shevchenko's monuments can be seen in many Ukrainian cities, true, but in many cities outside of Ukraine. To be more precise, th about 35 countries and about 130 cities worldwide where we can see Shevchenko's monuments, including Winnipeg, for example. In the memoirs of uh, Michael Luchkovich, in this actually, memoirs in this uh, publication, M M Michael Luchkovich, as you probably know, he was the first member of the Canadian Parliament of Ukrainian origin, and he wrote about the role of Shevchenko's text for himself and for other people in the national self-conscience for people of Ukrainian origin who were born outside of Ukraine, as probably many of people who came here today. Shevchenko's Kobzar collection was indeed a family treasure and a talisman present in virtually every home of Ukrainian migrants. We see uh, images uh, of Shevchenko and his name um, that, that they accompanied Ukrainians in all uh, big and small undertakings. For example, 
on the screen, you can see uh, Kobzar on a shopping plastic bag. So Shevchenko is always with you. You can take Shevchenko even to the supermarket. Shevchenko's name uh, validates any related initiative and raises its status. The highest awards for community members, uh, authoritative societies, associations are named after Shevchenko. For example, Shevchenko Scientific Society, Tovaristvo uh, Shevchenko, Naukovo Tovaristvo Mi Shevchenko, and the head of Edmonton branch is here with us, Professor Alena Dashkivska. The Ukrainian Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko is one of these authoritative associations, and third screen. Uh, is a slideshow created by Ben Vasilishin from Winnipeg, and this slide, this slideshow features Shevchenko commemorative bookmarks that won the yearly art competition organized by the Shevchenko Foundation to celebrate the legacy of the writer. I believe many people actually have these bookmarks if you were in Ukrainian schools, if you were in Ukrainian dance ensembles, you have these bookmarks because they sent in thousands of copies. And this year we have a new winner of this competition, and she is a newcomer from Ukraine, I believe, from Toronto. Yeah. Uh, so here on the third screen, we have demonstration of these beautiful works, um, and one of them, uh, by the way, is the one by Dr. Uh, Larissa Tsimbaluk Chladen. Uh, the fourth and final screen, um, it's this stream, this thematic stream, is. Uh, concerns very recent and actual ongoing events in Ukraine. The screen displays Shevchenko portrayal into contemporary Ukrainian visual arts and the roles assigned to the writer in the conditions of war. And I would like to pay a little bit more attention to this topic, to this screen, and to share a few uh, of my observations and considerations on this topic. So first, it's clear that this is not the first war to use Shevchenko's image. We have examples how Soviet artists and their ideological opponents from the organization of Ukrainian nationalists used Shevchenko's image in the propaganda during 1939-1945. After the start of the Ukraine, uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, which is, I want to underline was in 2014, not 2000, not 2022, so in, starting from 2014, a number of artworks will show Shevchenko at the front Shevchenko as a fighter, Shevchenko as a soldier, and it's very indicative moment here that mostly artists use the well-known image of Shevchenko as moustached person, formidable, like resolute Shevchenko, rather than another famous self-portrait. Shevchenko is in his young age as inspired young poet. It's not popular to show Shevchenko now as a young poet, maybe because it's a war and Shevchenko should be resolute figure. During his lifetime, Shevchenko hated army. He hated soldiers, he hated drill, but Shevchenko is armed, as we can see on the screen, by contemporary Ukrainian artists. And for them, it's not a dissonance to provide him with weapons. It can be either saber or pistol on the logo of Shevchenko festival. It could be Kalashnikov, or it could be even javelin. And Shevchenko is equally capable and masters modern weapons as quickly as Ukrainian soldiers drew at the front line. He is actually depicted as one of the soldiers, not as a mayor or general or, or, or officer. He is just a soldier. The second indicative moment is uh, how quickly artists responded to specific plots and specific events of this war, but selectively, not about all of them. The story of Borodyanka is a great example. Borodyanka, this city. Uh, it's located in the Bucha region of Kyiv Oblast, just one hour's drive from the Ukrainian capital. At the end of February in March 2022, we can see these pictures, Borodyanka was air bombarded and shelled by Russian artillery. The central square of the town was seriously damaged, apartment buildings were partially or completely destroyed, and more than 300 residents of Borodyanka were killed. Shapnel scout bust of Shevchenko on Borodyanka's central square became one of the symbols of Ukraine's desperate resistance in the first weeks of a full-scale Russian invasion. In a somewhat exaggerated or hyperbolized images by contemporary artists, bust of Shevchenko gains the features of a living being, and we can see red blood flow that flows from his head. The author of one of the paintings, which is to, uh, titled Rushnik from Borodyanka, her name is Katya Lisova. She depicts Shevchenko as a young man 
perhaps the only such image among others, Shevchenko as a young person. And consciously or unconsciously, the artist appeals to the image of Shevchenko as the all-seeing eye of Ukraine. In Ukrainian, it's called Vsevidyuchi Oko Ukraini. And this uh, hypostasis, this uh, kind of character comes from Shevchenko's own poetry titled Yurodivy, The Holy Fool, where poet himself reproached the heavenly all-seeing eye, in other words, God, for doing nothing to help the suffering people on earth. In the contemporary picture, Shevchenko is this all-seeing eye, which looks through the ruins of a destroyed house on the central square in Borodyanka. And I believe it's a telling fact that the artist chose Borodyanka as the topos, a town in the Bucha region, but not Bucha itself. It seems that the world famous, unfortunately, Bucha tragedy cannot be the material for such creative reinterpretations, at least not for now. Theodor Adorno once declared that poetry is impossible or rather barbaric after Auschwitz. It seems that some stories of the current war in Ukraine are too painful and cannot be the subject of artistic approach to the story of Bucha. Not only Shevchenko's bust in Borodyanka, but also other monuments of the poet take part in symbolic struggle or rather in a rivalry of symbols. And we can see on that screen once again that Ukrainian Minister of Defense, Oleksiy Reznikov, arrived in Kyiv's Shevchenko Park to take a picture next to Shevchenko Monument. In this way, he signaled to Ukrainians and to the world that he stayed with his post, with his country, similarly as President Zelensky. In contrast, a monument to Shevchenko in the Serbian city of Novi Sad was vandalized in the spring of 2022 with a symbol of the Russian so-called special military operation. You know this symbol, like kind of swastika, Z. Uh, monuments to Shevchenko are not just a piece of metal in the contemporary paintings. Uh, they have signs of a living beings and sometimes even fictional characters. If Marina Borovikova depicts the bust of Shevchenko bleeding from his head, Alexander Grechow quite unexpectedly refers to the zombie plot. His painting depicts Shevchenko's grave. We see the poet's hand extending from the grave. The picture says to the enemies of Ukraine, do not anger Shevchenko, otherwise he may rise from his grave. This one, this is next one actually, next screen. Uh, along with such names as orcs, Russian soldiers are sometimes called actually zombies for doomed senseless death in this aggressive war. If there are a bad Russian zombies, then there should be a counterbalance with the one, but the most powerful Ukrainian zombie, Shevchenko. And expression, which no živy Shevchenko, ever living Shevchenko, takes on an unexpected connotation in Grechov's painting. Creativity is about the search for new ways of interpreting familiar images and plots, and Ukrainian contemporary artists, as we can see, they add unexpected connotations that attract, surprise, and sometimes shock recipients. The image of Shevchenko, especially in war conditions, has a predominant sense of fighter, soldier, but not only this. In conditions of emotional tension and extreme experiences, comic images became a kind of outlet for artists, the means to cheer up and entertain fellow Ukrainians. Dr. Tsimbaluk Chladen mentioned about the memes. We have quite a few of them represented on the screen. For example, Olena Pavlova introduces Shevchenko to the popular animal animalistic meme character, Kitin Zhir, Ginger Cat, and Sashko Danilenko creates a humorously optimistic vision of the future. He predicts that these monuments that now are hidden behind sandbags, shielded from shelling, these monuments will reappear even more magnificent after the end of this war. In Danilenko's painting, Shevchenko is a butterfly, symbolizing a bright future for Ukraine. But necessary condition for this positive future to come is the elimination of the personalized evil, the current Russian president. That's why famous cartoonist Vyacheslav Kazanevsky clearly showed what would happen if Shevchenko met Putin. Uh, Kazanevsky visualized a bad wishes for the president of Russia, who is, as we know, war criminal, bad wishes from millions of people around the world. Another kind of frivolous hypostasis is Shevchenko fashionista, Shevchenko who wears outfits that have become a sign of our times. This is Shevchenko in Leopard force, hinting at the need to quickly provide Ukraine with German Leopard tanks. Another picture by Grechov referenced uh, at the Ukrainian musical band Kalush, the 2022 winner 
of the popular Eurovision Song Contest. Like the lead singer of Kalush, Shevchenko is wearing a pink hat, a fashion hit of the last year, even Arnold Schwarzenegger wore this pink hat. Items with Shevchenko's image and Cobb's cover illustration are a real hit, their commercial attractive belonging in the arts and crafts of both the artists of Ukrainian diaspora and in contemporary Ukrainian mass culture, along with numerous variations of prints on T-shirts, I believe you have or you know a lot of them. The poet is depicted on matchboxes and in a quiz game. He is both cool and hot man. Shevchenko Zapalya, Shevchenko lights up. And he is also omniscient teacher who tests the knowledge of true Ukrainians. Shevchenko Petaya, Shevchenko asks. Shevchenko, by himself, in his own right, he is iconic character and a hero of all time. But his image can also appear in connection with other cult characters such as Batman and Kozak Mamai. Talking about contemporary art, uh, the most often Shevchenko is shown in the image of the biggest hero of these days, of this time, Ukrainian soldier. And what is important to underline is that Shevchenko usually shown not as the head of mass of other people, not as in Soviet propaganda poster, but just alone as a self-sufficient warring unit, Odin or Polyvoin. And I believe that this strengths the focus and symbolic message of the Ukrainian resistance, that success in this war will be ensured by everyone together and by each and everyone individually. This is my very brief and very superficial overview of the materials that this exhibition contains. In short, my Dume exhibition explores the phenomenon of admiration for Shevchenko and how his legacy speaks volumes about Ukrainians about Ukrainians then and now, about Ukrainians in Ukraine and Ukrainians outside the country, in Canada in particular. So I would like to thank Dr. Tsimbaluk Chiladin for the opportunity to work with her, uh, bringing this exhibition to life. All compliments to the visual appearance of the exhibition should be addressed to her. Director of the Cool for Cosentia, Andy Palmer, she significantly helped with, with the text to improve them. Thank you a lot. We are also grateful to all our colleagues and friends who helped in the selection of material, in editing text, in, in general appearance for this exhibition. In addition to, to, to those who were already mentioned, our gratitude goes to Marina Chernyavska, to Yelena Pogosyan, to Lenin Pavluk, to Stevka Litvin, to my parents Al and Alexander Yesipenko, to Anna Morozova, to Victoria Kostinyuk. And my personal big sense goes to Natalia Yesipenko, archival assistant of the Bogdan Medvitsky Ukrainian Folklore Archives. Thank you. Sorry, I, I need to have a few more thankful notes. Ukrainian artists, it's important to underline, uh, Dr. Palmer mentioned about this, that they provided us with the rights to demonstrate their works for free because they are in solidarity with the main message of the exhibition, to remind about Ukraine, to remind about the need to help Ukrainians in every possible way during one of the most dramatic periods in, the, in our history. We are also gratitude to Shevchenko Foundation, represented by Bohdana Mashuk, who kindly uh, agreed to include the presentation on bookmark competition in the slides by Ben Vasilishin. And we are extremely grateful to all supporters of the Kyiv Focus Center and donors to Bohdan Medvitsky Ukrainian Folk Archives for contributions that make our archive a uh, uniquely rich collection. This exhibition, like many other projects of the Kyiv Center, would not be possible without the support from the MLCS department, from the university, but most importantly from the Ukrainian community here. Thank you.